that the earliest forms of CMSs were probably messenger pigeons? Yeah, I thought so too. But we're not going to talk about that. What we will do is bring in our next guest who will discuss a more modern means of content management system. And what she's going to do is talk about integrating Eleventy with a CMS and making it cool. So all the way from Paris, France, please welcome Lucy. Enjoy. Okay. I think that's all right. <laughs> all right. So welcome in Eventis and... Uh... Well, I want to start that like we are used to creating websites using data coming from Markdown or JSON files. But what about data coming from elsewhere in our file system? And more precisely, what about data coming from a CMS? That's what I'd like to discuss about during this talk. So how we can get data from a CMS, what's the event 2.0 version of doing so? And finally, how we can abstract that into a plugin. But before that, I'm Lucy Aber. As you said, I'm from Paris. I'm a student wrapping up my CS degree, and that's funny because I plan to talk about this today during my next week presentation at school in order to get my degree. So fingers crossed for that. <laughs> I've also been working at Prismic for the past year as developer experience engineer. Prismic is a CMS, so you start to see the link with this talk, but no worries, this is not an ad. You can use any CMS you want. Finally, also like Nuxt.js, for which is a view framework for which I'm an ambassador for, but I also love Eleventy, of course. All right, enough about me. Let's dive into today's topic. And first of all, I'd like to discuss what's a CMS and why one. So CMS, CMS stands for Content Management System. It's a tool dedicated to managing content. And in that regard, pretty much anything is a CMS. So a notebook is a CMS, Excel is a CMS, GitHub is a CMS, and of course, WordPress, Sanity, Prismic, Contentful are all CMSs. So what's the difference between all of those? Well, to me, there's two. First one is that like, it's the way users interact with them. And the second one is like, how easy is it to get content from them to a website? So with that in mind, as an agency, you could tell your client to write a blog post in a notebook and then take pictures of it to a service so that the content of their website gets updated. Or you could tell them to log in from nice portals that allows them to write, schedule, and publish their content easily. And well, by the way, this is still not an ad. This is Sanity's dashboard, but OK. As you asked, here's Prismix. OK, but I think you'll start to get my point. So not, ever, why, not everyone is familiar with Markdown, JSON, or even GitHub. And because of that, what we call today traditional CMSs are here to make anyone able to manage content for a website. And you can use, then use that content on your event website. Great. So now that we know better about CMSs and why, let's see how we can get data from a CMS inside the event. With Eleventy, when you talk data, we have to talk data cascade. With Eleventy, O.x, the data cascade looks like this. And I've been looking through it, and unfortunately, there's no CMS data section in there. So our closest guess would be global data files, and you'd be right. So let's see how we can use global data files in order to get data from a CMS inside our Eleventy application. OK. So here I have like a really simple Eleventy application running, which is just like a, an hello world that you can see here. And in order to use global data files, first, what we have to do is to create an underscore data folder. And inside it, we create a file called cms.js for case. So inside cms.js, which is a custom, uh, global data files, what you need to do in order to expose data to your data cascade is to export something that contains that data. So for us, because we need to get data from us and we don't have that data yet, what we can do, we can export a function. Inside this function, you can use your CMS client, which is a library provided by your CMS, CMS in order like, to get those data. So here we do const data equal get CMS data. And then we just return that those data. Finally, because um, getting data from a CMS likely involves making a network call, we need to await this call. And this is great because we can make those functions async. So here, in order to make it work, I just import my little get CMS data from your favorite CMS. And with just that, if I save that here, I go back to my template and I add a little bit of nunchuk in order like, to render something. If I save, you can see that now it's showing like every page's title uh, that I get from my CMS inside my page. And from here, the word is yours to style that content and to make a website out of it. OK. So we know now how to use um, 
global data files in order to get data from a CMS, but you might be thinking that was 11.0.x. So what about 11.0.1.0? So again, with 11.0, if we talk data, we have to talk data cascade. And with 11.0.1.0, this data cascade looks like this. Fortunately for us, global data files are still a thing. So what I just show you is still perfectly fine with 11.0.1.0. However, there's a newcomer to the event data game called custom global data. And well, what are custom global data? So custom global data are a way to inject global data directly from your event config file. This means that there's no global data files involved. And because of that, it makes it much easier to bundle that project into a plugin. But let's forget about the plugin part for now and refactor our code to use custom global data files instead. So go back to my code. And well, as I said, first of all, we're getting data from our 11 config file. So to do so, I create my 11 config file. And 11 config is just like a file that exports a function that receives the 11 uh, config as an argument. And that 11 config object is like an object sort of properties and methods that you can use in order to edit your 11 website behavior. So one we're interested in today is the add global data method. Uh, global data method. And this method needs two arguments. The first one being a string representing like where we want this data to be available in our data cascade. First, it was CMS. The second one is the data that we want to make available. So here, we just copy paste our function from before inside it, like this. And then we run also our import. And from here, if I save my file, and I delete like our previous global data file. You can see that like, well, let's just give a quick refresh to our server. All right. Okay, I messed up somewhere. <laughs> uh, REA, of course. No, we don't need to attack. Okay, well, I messed up somewhere here, uh, which is a bit embarrassing. Um, okay, hold on, I have it actually. Okay. Well, here it, here it is. I don't know what I was missing. Uh, I think it's an async here, keyword, which makes sense actually. <laughs> All right, so we fixed that here. And well, as you can see, it's still working exactly like our global data files. However, there's a small catch, which we don't see here, and I'm not sure it's a feature or a bug. To show that, let's just console log our data here. So I do my console log, I go back to my console, and I can see it has been logged two times. That's weird. Like, and that's weird. And actually what's happening here is that 11 is running that function for every pages that we have inside our event um, project. So if I add like another page, we logged it three times and so on and so on. And this is an issue for us because you're making network calls and this can make your build process significantly longer. So in order to work, to work that around, what we can do, we can do that code outside of the add global data method. And let's, let's do it right now. So what we do, we declare CMS data constant and we copy paste that code inside it. And then we run that function on itself. And what this will give us is a promise that will contain our data, which we can then return um, inside that global data method. And now if I save that and I go back to my server, you can see that it has only been logged one once since like we reloaded the server. So we fix that, great, awesome. So we're done like refactoring our code to use custom global data files. And you might be thinking, God, that was so complicated, at least compared to global data files. So you're right about that, but the great thing about it is that our code is now ready to be shared as a plugin. And if you are to share that code as a plugin, there's only two things that you need to do. First one is like to update your package JSON to add your own three point other package, which would be 11c.js. And then boom, you're done. Like you can just ship that to NPM and that's it. And that's basically what I had to, what I had to do when I was making the 11 plugin for Prismic. But of course, like there's a lot of other things that you can do in order to make your plugin nicer. And here are some of them that I will go through a bit quickly. But anyway, so you can you can use the debug package to lock things. This is a preferred event, event way to lock things in an event application. So there's users to control the log to their liking. Then you can make your plugin on those options. This is pretty straightforward and is pretty crucial for CMS because you need users to pass some configuration to know like where to get the data from. Then you can also add shortcuts for plugin, which will help your users to uh, template your custom data structure. And finally, if you want to go overkill about it, you can even add some TypeScript definitions for your option config in order like, to help users get through like, configuring your plugin. 
But anyway, so let's recap everything that you learned today about integrating 11C with the CMS. So first of all, like global data files are a great way of doing so with 11C 0.x and 11C 1.0. Then with 11C 1.0, we can also do that with custom global data, which is a bit more complicated, like complicated than global data files, but it's also easy to work to create a plugin by a lot. And finally, plugins can simply be an 11C configuration file. So that was my talk, integrating 11C with a CMS, making it cool to use. You can find everything out this talk and more like Ben at lucy.red for such 11Cs. You can also check out my blog at lucy.red and my Twitter for more of me and my nonsense at lucy.red for such Twitter. Thanks.